Baruch Hashem. Okay, so we are in the second part of Mishnah Hay, um, something which takes a deeper understanding than the regular. The Mishnah concludes and says, this is Rabbi Yossi ben Yochanan, he writes the following, A person shouldn't increase his talk, his conversation with his, with Im Ha'isha, with the woman, as a hey there, ha, Ha'isha, the Gemara makes, the Mishnah makes a deal in that phrase, Ha'isha, Be'ishto Amru, if it's talking about the woman, then which woman is it referring to? It must be referring to his wife, Be'ishto Amru, Kalvachomer, and you can make a Kalvachomer for that, that he shouldn't be increasing his conversation, talking too much to another woman. Mikanam Ruchachamim, and then uh, at a different stage, based on that phrase that Rav Yochanan ben, Rav Yossi ben Yochanan said, then the rabbis continued and they said, Kolzman shadam marbe sichai maishas. They already added the word kol here. Anytime that a person increases his conversation with a woman, gorem ra'alat, and this is even his wife, Haisha, gorem ra'alat smo, and that causes evil to himself. And then it gets harsher. Tell me divrei Torah, and then it gets even harsher. Vosofo yoresh Gehenna, and that's the most harsh. That eventually he'll go to Gehenna. Today we're just going to address one major question, which is the um, the relationship between a man and a woman. What the concern here is, and how it goes down so terribly, how it goes down so low that it goes from. The stage of Ra'a, what is the Ra'a referring to? And then it goes down to Bitul Torah, what's the Bitul Torah referring to? And then Sofa Yorash Gehenim, how does that happen? Now, in order to understand this deeply, we're going to do it on two levels. We're first going to do it on the level of the, most of the Mephoshim, Rabbi Nuyona, Ravadya Bartanura, the Rambam, who explain it on, on one level. And we're going to go with them. And then we're going to go and do it again, but this time with the Maharal. And that takes us to an entirely different understanding, a much, much deeper understanding on a different plane entirely. So let's start with Rabbein Yona. So Rabbein Yona explains that the, um, the, the, the way of man, and this is also reflected in the words of the Rambam in the end of Hilchos Suri Bia, is that he can only think one thought at a given time. This is the language of Rabbein Yona. Machshevet Torah, lotikon, a person's mind can't be focused on Torah when he is talking to a woman. There are two opposite thoughts the mind can't have in one, at one time. So this is the way the Rabbin Yana reads the Mishnah. So when a person's mind is clear, then his mind is an open kli, it's able to receive Torah. However, when a person's mind... He opens his mind to the words of uh, a woman. Then by, he opens the door to the Yetzirah. By opening that mind, then his mind is now not focused anymore on Hashem's will. It's not focused on Torah. And it takes it, it's not that the Yetzirah attacked him. Rather, Gorem Ra'al Atzmo. He opened the door to allow bad to attach itself. If you have a particular negative sight, that you've never gone to and you've never thought about, so they'll never come and harm you either. But once the Yetzirah sees that you open the door to something inappropriate, the Yetzirah says, oh, you've found an interest in this? I'm going to come and get you. I had a friend who, when I was younger, um, brother, was working in a particular company and there were Jews and non-Jews there, and they were having a debate about whether Jews do believe in what they believe in or not. And they said, well, let's phone up the organization Jews for... And we'll ask them, like, what exactly something is. So this, friend, this older brother, my friend, phoned up the organization to prove that he doesn't believe in it, and when they do believe in it, once they saw that a Jew phoned them, they didn't let him go. They were phoning him again, then phoning him again. He said, I'm not interested, get rid of it. But they didn't get lost. They held themselves attached to him. They said, now he found a Jew who's interested. So the first thing is, once a person opens the door by speaking extra to a woman that he doesn't need to speak to, then he's gorem ra'ala atzmo, meaning in his mind, I'm not saying the woman does it to him, but in his mind, the thoughts of the woman, now the Yetzirah, the Yetzirah of Arias, now has an opening. Ah, he's opened the door, he's given an invitation, we're going to take hold of him now and take that invitation. 
And therefore, he was the one who created the negative sliding slope that he goes into. Gorem ra'ala atzmo. And why uvo tell me divrei Torah? And here the Mephoshim asks a very simple question. Anytime you're speaking more than necessary, unnecessary conversation, you're wasting time from Torah. It's not necessarily true just for a woman. If you were talking to your friends about sports for hours and hours, that would also be botel midivrei Torah. So why does it say over here this phrase, or botel midivrei Torah? And the Mephoshim explain. Because once a person has opened his mind to think of the opposite gender, then not only is he not learning Torah at the time when he's learned, not learning Torah because he's speaking to her, but then his mind is already occupied. In a sense, his mind is hijacked. And therefore, he's botel midivrei Torah, not only the time he's speaking to her, but he's botel midivrei Torah, that even when he then later goes and tries to learn Torah, his mind isn't able to have that same focus because the image and the thoughts and the conversations goes, goes, splitters back, splitters back, splitters back to the conversation he had with her. And that's what Rabbi Yona was saying, the machshava of Torah won't be able to be him when he's thinking about the woman and his thoughts because the two minds can't be. What do you mean the two things can't be at the same time? Right now he's talking to her after the girl learned Torah. No, he's saying that even when you finish talking to her and now you're coming to learn Torah, the mind won't be able to be occupied in Torah because their mind is already hijacked by the thoughts of the woman that have gone into his mind. He spoke to her once and I was thinking, should I speak to her again? Or what did she say? Or how could I have said it? And it's all the Yetzirah starts working over time in order for him to... And if a person thinks that it ends there, so then the, the, the Pirkei Avos continues and says, V'sofo yoresh gehenam, why? She'sof ba lidei avera, achar asher b'shirirus vibo holech o madaver devarim ima, al kol panim yaseh chet v'yoreit sha'ula. Now the Rebbein Yona gets extremely harsh at this point. And he basically says that it's a slippery slope and once you've opened the door to it, it's almost impossible to get out of it. He says that once the, it's almost like a net that he's been captured into, it's almost like he's in a beta surim and he can't get out. And therefore he concludes and he says, Once a person begins the sin, the sin won't necessarily attach itself to you. But once you open yourself to the sin and you're still continuing to be occupied in the thoughts of it, HaKadosh Baruch Hu will allow it to happen. It, it's, it's as if like the, what, the, what it says in the Gemara Makkas, that anyone who wants to be pure, then HaKadosh Baruch Hu will enable him and encourage him and allow him to be pure. Anyone who wishes to be impure, Hashem will push him on that path, that it'll open that path up for him. So here on an on a, on a initial level, Kol Zman She Adam Marbe Sichai Maisha, Whenever a person allows his mind to focus on that, he empties his mind for that area. He allows his mind to get occupied in that matter. Then that's a, he's gorem ra'ala at the very moment that he's doing it. And not only that, but even when he later comes to learn Torah, botel me divrei Torah, he won't be able to focus on his learning because his mind is already captured, hijacked by those thoughts. And once he's so involved in those thoughts, then the Yetzirah of desire will work and work and work and will capture him, chas v'sholam, it will even bring him to do sins. There's one more insight before we get to the Maharal's way of uh, explaining it, is there's an extra word that was added here, the word kol. Why did the Mishnah add the word kol? Kol zman sh'adam marbe sichayim ha'isha. And I didn't see this written anywhere, but from conversations that I've had with people, I thought maybe this is the interpretation. There are some times when a person is in a, a healthy frame of mind, a healthy emotional state, and then he says to himself, I recognize clearly my mind is functioning well, speaking to a woman who you're not ready to get married to, or even speaking to a woman who you are ready to get married to, but over the top too much, that is unhealthy. I'm not going to go down that path. However, when a person is in an emotionally fragile state, then he feels like no man, no male could understand me now. No one could, I, I could, there's no one I could speak to who would really get me, who would really understand me very clearly. And then the only one who would really understand me now is, is a girl. That's the only one who would really deeply, because I'm in a sensitive emotional state. I have to reach out to a girl now so that she'll be able to understand me. And therefore came the Mishnah to rebuke and uproot that thought and said, there's no, there's no exceptions here. Calls man anytime, and even if you're doing it from a needy place and you're doing it from a place which you feel is essential, it doesn't make a difference. 
opening the door to the Yetzirah will still enable that. Ah, but you need it emotionally, you need it. You'll find a way to do it another way, but good won't come out of bad. Even if you think you're doing it initially just to express your emotion and release yourself from something, it will still attach that person's thoughts to that girl and it will still make him connected and that will still lead down the negative path that will continue from there. So that's the Mishnah according to the Mepharshim, according to the Pshat. And I want to go now into uh, the Maharal's interpretation. You see, even according to the Pshat that we've just read now, nowhere did we say that women are bad. Chas v'chalila. No, men are good and women are good. But Kozman Shadam Marbesi Chai Maisha Now, what, why? Why would it happen? Is, is speaking to a woman, why is that going to cause him to go in a negative place? So you could read this Mishnah wrong, Chas v'shalom, and you could say that, you know, well, women are the source of bad. And therefore, talking to women is attaching yourself to evil. And therefore, if you talk to them too much, then that's going to cause bad to you and you won't learn Torah and you'll go to Gainam. That would be one way of reading it in a very unhealthy way. But like the Maharal writes, I'm going to read you this quote. This is the Derech Chaim of the Maharal. He says, Ein klau. Do not think that this is an expression of the lower state of the woman at all. It's nothing to do with the woman, meaning man is whole, man is shalem, man is perfect. Woman is whole. He's going to go to place the Gan Eden. She's going to get a place in Gan Eden. So what's the issue here? The issue is not with him and the issue is not with her. The issue is when they meet. When he, more accurately, when he starts running after her. And listen to the words of the Maharal. Ki davar ze, meaning the issue here that we're describing in the Mishnah, Masha Adam yored lihiyot nimshach achar ha'isha. The issue here is where he's drawn after her. But it's not a problem with him, it's not a problem with her. The issue is it's the man being drawn after the women. Noter mina mitziyut, being drawn after the reality of his reality into her reality. Just to emphasize once more this point, the Maharal continues and he says, Lo ahavat ha'ish le'isha. The author of this Mishnah, Yosti ben Yochanan, is not coming in any way, chasa shalom, to say that a man shouldn't love his wife. Of course a man should love his wife. yesh le'ahav gufo. Of course a man should love his wife. The Gemara Yavama Samach Beis, the Gemara Yavam Yisachbeis continues there and says many other things that any man without a woman is not considered a man, doesn't have Torah, doesn't have Shlemus, doesn't have a Choma, he's, he's not even a person, he doesn't even exist, the Gemara says, if he doesn't have a wife. So clearly we're speaking in a very positive way about the connection between a man and a woman. So if it's, if it's not that there's a problem with a man, and there's not that there's a problem with a woman, and there's no other problem with a man loving a woman as long as it's his wife, then what's the issue here in the Mishnah? Even one's own wife, Hasan Shalom, if he increases to seek after her, then he will end up in Gehenna. So what's it referring to on a deep level? Is it referring to Taiva, but with a man's wife, it's permitted. So, so what's it referring to? Could be that even with a man's wife, he'll want to be with her at times that are forbidden, and that's what it's referring to. That's what some of them are forcing say. The Maharal takes it a level a lot deeper, and I'm going to give an introduction in order to get to what the Maharal say. This idea, I haven't seen written anywhere explicitly, but it came out of the Maharal and it came out of one of the Rebbeim that I once learned by, and I'm putting some pieces together, but I feel that it has a lot of depth to the idea and it could be a very inspiring idea and give much more clarity and insight. Bear with me, it's a, it's a, it's a process, but it will get us to a, hopefully a much deeper place. Hashem created the world in a system where there's a koach mashpia, there's an influence, and there's a koach mushpa, that which is influenced. So some examples of that are shamayim va'aretz. Hashem made the heavens, which is the one who influences, and, the, the, and there's the earth, which is the one that receives the influence. So the shamayim gives down the rain, and the earth receives the rain. Now, the, uh, the shamayim is higher, but it doesn't make it better. It's a system where there's always one higher and one lower, and the one who's higher is being mashpia, is being influenced, influencing the one who's lower. 
And of course, the one who's higher has to give the influence and the one who's lower receives the influence and the whole system only works when they're working together. Now, in a sense, HaKadosh Baruch, not in a sense, the essence of the Mashpia is Hashem is Baruch. The Chazal compare Hashem to being the Chosan and Kala Yisrael to being the Kala in the role of the Mashpia and the Mushpa. Hashem is the ultimate one who's influencing. Hashem is the ultimate one who's giving the power to the world. Now, if you look at the ultimate essence of where influence comes from, it's the example of Hashem creating the world, which is Hashem making that which He can influence. And if you look at it from that perspective, you'll see very clearly that Hashem doesn't need it for Himself. Meaning nowhere here is the sense of Hashem is influencing because He wants to get something out of it. But rather, like the Ramchal speaks many times about, at the beginning of Derech Hashem, for example, and in, and in Mises Sharim that Hashem gives good for the benefit of the one who's receiving. So let's pause where we're so far. We've said so far that Hashem made a system in the world where there's many examples of a mashpia and a mushpa, the one influencing and the one being influenced. We also said that the primary example of that is Hashem in the world. Hashem gives influence to the world. And we said that in a sh- in original form, in the way that Hashem made it, is that He doesn't need it. The one giving the influence is doing it for the sake of the one receiving the influence. That's the primary example of where it comes from. Okay, now, in all of nature where this model exists, there's no conflict because that's the nature that Hashem gave it. So when Shemayim gives Aretz, it's also the same example where the Shemayim doesn't need it, but the Aretz needs it. The rain comes down, the rain is benefiting the earth, the rain is doing it, and the earth is benefiting. But there's no question there of why is the Shamaim doing it? And is it is Shamaim doing it Lishma? It's not relevant because that's the nature that Hashem put in the world, which is actually a reflection of the original way that Hashem is. Hashem is doing it to benefit the one who's receiving. So far, so good. Now, when you get to man, then also man and woman are a mashpia and a mushpa. You just think of a way a child is born, it's very clear. The man is the one who gives the influence. And the woman is the one who receives the influence. So in a sense, Kiv Yachol, has, the man is like Hashem, Kiv Yachol, being the Mashpia, and the woman is like the world who is receiving the influence. Really, Adam, the full Adam of a, ma- a man and woman together is receiving the influence from Hashem. But in the microvision of the man and the woman, then the man is giving the influence, the woman is receiving the influence. Okay, now here there's an issue. Because man has free choice. Man is not like Shemaim Va'aret. Shemaim Va'aretz, there's no choice there. It's just the nature of the world. So of course, Shemaim is going to be influencing and Aretz is going to be receiving. But when it comes to man, then there could be a hashpa'a that comes from a healthy place. We could be emulating Hashem and doing it in a healthy way. Or chas v'shalom, there could be an unhealthy way. Where instead of it being that the man is being mashpia onto the woman in the way that Hashem says to do, which is that Hashem is doing it just for the benefit of the one who's receiving, which is the ultimate way, that's the healthy way, the appropriate way, the way that we were designed, there could be something else happening where the man will be doing it for the sake of himself. The man wishes to receive pleasure and he gives influence to the woman not to benefit her, not to be mashpia on her, but he's doing it because he wants to receive from that. And that's not the way that Hashem made us. That's not natural. Going back to the model of Hashem, Hashem is mashpia only for the sake of the mushpa. But when you look at this, this uh, perverted way of doing it, this inverse way of doing it, then the man is being mashpia. But really, if you think of it, it's not that he's being mashpia for the woman. He's really doing it for himself. So that turns him into being a mushpa. He's trying to receive. Instead of him trying to give like Hashem, he's trying to receive because he wants to get pleasure. I heard a very terrible quote uh, from Umar Saulam, from I don't know, not, not necessarily one of the greatest of the Umar Saulam, but this is the way that they said it, and it, it exactly defines the negative way of a mashpia and a mushpa in the unhealthy way. This is the quote. They said, a woman, a wife, is the tax you have to pay for pleasure. Hashem yishmo, meaning you, you want pleasure, but 
You can only have it if you have a woman, they have a wife. So you have to have a wife. And, and that's a tax you have to pay in order to have pleasure. It's the exact reverse. Meaning instead of emulating Hashem Yisbarach and seeing the male as the mashpia, being there in order to give to the mushpa, which is the healthy way, the way of Hashem in the world, the way of Shammai and Va'aret, the way of a man and a woman in the way that Hashem designed it. Rather, what happens is the man turns into being a woman. Meaning the male, the mashpia, turns into being a mushpa. Meaning instead of him doing it for the sake of giving, he does it for the sake of his receiving where he becomes a mushpa. So now let's go back to the Maharal and understand this mission on a totally different understanding, a totally different level. Kol zaman sha'adam marbes yichai ma'isha. What is essentially happening to him when he does that? The Maharal points out the word is marbe, meaning of course you're supposed to speak to your wife a force is supposed to have a conversation. That's a healthy thing to do. You're supposed to love her and give to her. But when a person speaks to her too much, then what happens is he starts to obtain her perspective in a way where it's reversed. And instead of him being the male figure, instead of him viewing the world from a male perspective, he starts to have a switch and he starts to view the world from that female perspective to the degree where he becomes a mushpa, where he becomes a wanting to receive. And he becomes then not anymore the emulating Hashem, being the male figure and giving, but rather he becomes the, what, what the Maharal understands as Mishnah is referring to, is a man who interacts with his wife with the intention for him to benefit, for him to receive where he's spoken, Kivyachol, spoken so much to his wife that he's gained and he's acquired the female perspective, which for a woman is Gan Eden. For her to be of Mashpia and to receive the Ashpa'a is how she gets Gan Eden. But for him, it's Gehenna. If everyone recognizes their role and they fulfill their role, then each person will go to Gan Eden. Let me give a mashal for that. In the body, you have a system which is functioning. In the functioning system, you have a mind and you have a heart. In a mind and a heart, if the heart would wish to act like a mind and the mind would want to try and do the function of the heart, the whole system would break down. But when they work together in harmony, the mind is working with the heart, they're all trying to do their role effectively, the whole system can work together. Hashem has made a world with achdus. And the way of the achdus in the world is there's always a koach mashpia and a koach mushpa. There's the rain coming down and giving the earth. Does that mean the uh, rain, the, 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 the sky is better? It's not better. We're not discussing a judgment statement here. It's a system that works together. The Shemaim and the earth. And therefore, man and woman, it's not a judgment statement of a man being higher and a woman being lower. We're not trying to judge anything. It's a system that works together. In this system, there's a mashpia and a mushpa. Hashem takes the role of the Shemaim. The man takes the role of the Shemaim. The woman takes the role of the Aretz. Because he's mashpi and she's mushpa. What would happen if Shemaim would say, I want to be like the Aretz. I want someone else to give me rain. It's not working. It's not, it's not designed that way. That's not the system. It doesn't mean he's better or she's better. We're not discussing who's better. That's not the relevant topic. No one's discussing that. It's a system of how it works, how the Koch mashpia works. So when a woman tries to take a man's role, which is what there was a movement recently, which was working against male chauvinism. Male chauvinism is appropriate and women's live is inappropriate. Anytime you try and say you're a man and therefore you're better than a woman, it's inappropriate. And if you say you're a woman and you want to be equal to a man, acting exactly like a man, it's also inappropriate. Both of those sides are inappropriate. There's a heart and a mind. Each one has a role. And when the system works together, it functions together in a healthy way, the whole system can function. It says the Maharal, that when a man takes the role of the woman, then think what's happening. Think deeply. He was given koach lahashpia. He was given the ability to, to be mashpi on another. But once he decides to take the role of a woman, once he wants to receive, once he enters the marriage relationship, not to give to her, but because he wants to get pleasure out of it, then he's emptied himself out. He's vacuumed himself. All the positive koach that Hashem gave him to give to the woman, where he was getting mashpi and he was going to be the conduit to bring Torah down into the family, he's now emptied that out. He's poured it all out because he's not choosing to be a koach mashpi He's becoming a Koch Mushpa. And that's Gehenna. That's the entry to Gehenna. 
And that's why it's Botel Midevrei Torah, because Hashem gave him a mission of fulfilling Torah, of being mashpia in the world through the tool of Torah. The tool of Torah is how a man is mashpia in the world. That's the man's way of being mashpia. The man is mashpia. He's Botel Midevrei Torah because he's not taking the koach of hashpa'a that he was given to bring Torah into the world. And what he's doing is trying to act like a woman. He's coming to the world for him to receive. For her to receive in this world is the design. It's perfect. It's her place to Gan Eden. For a man to come into this world and try and be here just to receive pleasure is Gehenim. It's not his role. So we'll conclude with one more idea. And this will really cap it up very beautifully. The bracha that a woman makes every morning is Shasani Kiritsono. Hashem made me in his way. What does it mean that he made me in his way? So I don't know what that means exactly, but let's find another place where we say that every single day. And if you look at the context of the other place, you can understand much more deeply what it means, Shasani Kuratsono. Where else do we say every day that something made that Hashem made like His will? Every day we say it, numerous times a day, up to 10. In Aramaic we say, Yisgadal v'yisgadash shemei rabba ba'alma di vera chirute. Translation, ba'alma in the world, di vera that He created, Meaning, the world is created in the way that Hashem made it. And now you can understand very, very deeply. The world is the place of the being mushpa. Hashem is the mashpia, being mashpia on the mushpa. What is the place of the hashpa'a that comes down? This world. Hashem doesn't want that His influence will remain in the higher worlds. Hashem desires to be in the Tachtonim. Hashem's whole desire is to bring Shechina and to bring Kedusha down into this world, into this physical world. That's the design of the world. Yiskadal v'yiskadash shamei rabba. We're praising Hashem's name. Where are we praising His name? Where is the place this praise? Ba'alma divra chirutei. In the world that He created as He wills. What's His will of this world? His will of this world is to be a physical place where His influence can be expressed, where Shechina can come down, where Hashem Shechina can be expressed in this world. So the expression that something was made in the way that Hashem wants it means it's a place where the Shechina can dwell by receiving Hashpa'ah. That the Koach Hashpa'ah can come down and be influenced this world. That's what the word means. Hashem designed a world which can be a kli to receive His Shechina. So when we say that Hashem wants something, Hashem wants this world to be filled of His holiness. And therefore, this world is the receiver. And also a woman is the receiver. In the, in the, in the mini model. A woman in the world, a woman in the Aretz, have that same koah. The world was created in the way that Hashem wills it, that it has the power to receive the Shechina. And a woman was created in the way that Hashem designed her to receive the Shekhinah. And what is the common denominator between them? They're both involved in physical things. The world is the place of physicality. And the woman's nature is that she likes to look beautiful in the way that she looks. She likes to make other things look beautiful in the way she designs things, make the home look beautiful. And the Gemara says that you should listen to the woman in the way that she wishes to design her home. That's her koach. Her koach is this world. Her koach is the place where Hashpa'a can come down. She was designed in the way that Hashem willed her to be, to be able to be in this world and receive the Shechina. That's a much deeper understanding. So let's summarize the two points that we made. The lower level is, we're going to summarize the two points we made and we're going to connect them. The lower level is that when a man follows after a woman, it means he's following after his desires. And then he's causing bad to himself and then he's not going to be learning Torah, and he's going to end up in Gehenna because he's opening the door to the Eight Sahara. That was on the lower level. But now you can understand very deeply that that's not really a different level to the other level that we described. It's the same thing. That when a man makes himself into he that looks for desire in this world, then he's trying to be a mushpa. He's trying to be a receiver. He's looking to be that which can receive pleasure in this world. That's why he's Gorem Ra'alat Smob, but tell me the I'm going to get him. Rather, what should man be? He shouldn't be looking after the woman, not on a physical level and not on a, on, a, on a spiritual level. 
He shouldn't be looking after the woman on a physical level to be looking at her body. And he shouldn't be looking after her on a spiritual level of, I wish to be the one receiving. The woman was made like the world to be the Koach HaMushpa. That's how she was designed, to receive the Shekhin in the world. That was the way Hashem designed her. That's not the way Hashem designed a man. And if he tries to be like that, to try and be the Koach HaMushpa, then he'll be destroying the world because his role is to be learning Torah and to be bringing Hashpa down into the world. That's the Koach of the male. That's the Koach of the female. If the man denies his role, either by being chauvinist or by being like a woman, then he's, he's betraying the design that Hashem gave him. Hashem gave him Torah to be, bring Hashpa'a down into the world. Hashem designed the world and the woman to be that which receives the Hashpa'a in order that Hashem's name can dwell. And only when you have Ish ve'isha, only when you have the two of them together, then you have Shekhinah b'nehem. Then the Shekhinah can really dwell. Thank you for this. Thanks so much, Rabbi.